Looks like I got one more to go. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, let's get this down in here so you can see what we got. Okay, there. That's the pre polish. It's uh, not too bad. And this next one, I'm going to go ahead and go to 18,000. All right, I'm sorry, 8,000. No more. I'm going to keep the same shimming, see how it works. I'm going to wipe this off pretty good. I uh, better not do that. Now, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and I'm going to make a slurry on this one because this is glass and I don't want to spend tons of time on it. And I know this uh, speeds things up. 8,000, 8,000. Ooh, it's going to be a lot. That's probably too much. So I will leave this on there for the next time. Which we need it quite a few more times. Let me add some water. I'm going to go ahead and get back to the beginning so I... A little careful doing this. Okay. Beautiful. Shouldn't take long. Now when you get into your quartzes and stuff, you're going to have to do some experimenting. It gets a little tougher. Nice slurry on there. Try not to change the size of any of my facets. I guess one thing I haven't said yet is, if you're new at this, you want to you want to finish your stone. You know, you might have some glitches, or you might have misindexed, or you might have done something. Just you know, buck it up and and keep on going. You need to get some stones under your belt. Keep it so you can look back and see where you came from. But don't stop. Just keep on going. There'll be a day when you can, you know, get through a stone without having a misindex or just something silly, a scratch or whatever it might be. Don't do nothing crazy like going from your rough cut to your 50,000. You'll be rubbing for two days on each facet. You might as well just stair step down. Try not to take any shortcuts until you get used to it. Of course, I have a lot more uh, laps over here than, than I actually used on this stone. I guess a little bit of experience knows I can skip around a little bit and do a few different things. I have several different approaches I do. But this is just a straightforward one. Walk you down through them. Get an idea of the time it takes, or should take. One. OK, 
Okay, our pavilion, in this case, is going to be done. I uh, only took it through 8,000, which is okay. Wouldn't do that for a ruby. I'd keep on going or something, you know. But, see if I can get it clean enough to get a good shot of it. Anyway, there you go. There's where we're at. That'll be just way too close. Look how much I shaved. Anyway, there we go. I am... Now I need to turn this around. Just real quick before I move on. I just wanted to show you, I actually do use 8,000 in oil. Um, the oil I happen to use is olive oil. Uh, I make a slurry of 8,000 in oil and 50,000 in oil. Um, been trying to use that on some of the softer stones to see how it works. I ain't fully tested it yet. I'm, uh, I don't mind trying new things. If I come up with an idea, I give it a whirl. And I hope you will too. One other thing I think I ought to mention, I'm pretty much using uh, diamond on on this particular uh, marble. But there's tin oxide, chrome oxide, and cerium oxide. Um, in this system, basically, now you know what you can do with the old gift cards that you use up. You know, that's all that is, pretty much, is a card. You, uh do it very similar to the di diamond. You put some powder on there, uh, put some water, and go ahead and start polishing. Um, you have some learning to do, you know. Some of the oxides work better on some materials than, than another one would. But let's say chrome may work better on something than tin oxide would. Um, I'm no expert. I trial and error it. If I like the way it looks, I use it. I'm on the big push of trying to do everything with diamond. So it's actually been a while since I've used tin oxide, I've chrome oxide. I've used uh, DVDs and CDs for polishing lamps. Um, you know, whatever I can think of. I actually, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm going to try one of these. I'm not sure how it's going to work. But, uh, that's in time. This is actually out of the hardware store. I think it's used in uh, framing. <laughs> I doubt that'll do very good, but heck, try anything. And like always, you'll always be able to get copper laps from my website that are stamped out. Um, nice sized. However, you can always make your own. I I would always stress to try to get all your copper laps the same thickness or thereabouts. These are all, you know, plus or minus whatever, thousands or so. But uh, that helps when you switch from grit to grit. You don't have a whole lot of time in adjusting. Um, of course, it's easy for me to keep some uncharged ones around in case something crazy happens. Like, you, you know, you get rough diamond powder on on one of your finer lamps now that finer that that